we come back to the main problem that we have in the handling of large state spaces. So, one thing that people try to do all the time is to see that whether we can extract out an abstraction of the finite state machine and prove the property on the abstraction and then show that if it holds on the abstraction then it is also going to hold on the original machine. Okay. Now, there are various ways of doing this abstraction and there are some abstractions which preserve the truth of properties in some logics. Okay. So, to start with we are going to talk about two types of abstractions, one is called by simulation equivalence in in by simulation let us take an example suppose i have a state machine which is like this this is the kripke structure And let us say that the property that we want to uh, talk about is P until Q, right. Now, what we want to say here is that, okay, why do these are all different states, right. So, let us give them some state encodings, okay. So, let us say that this is Okay. Now, we can say that this is equivalent, we will say that this is equivalent to where sorry this is q where this the correspondence is that this is equivalent to this one this corresponds to this one these two are clubbed into this one these two clubbed into this one and this one is this. Okay. Now, why are we saying that these two are equivalent? Because in terms of the propositions P and Q, their future is the same. Right? So, for example, from this state, I get P in the next state and then Q for in all the next states. From this state also I get P in the next state and Q in all the next state. So, if your next states are the same, then your futures are the same, right. So, because their next states are the same, so their futures are the same, right. Because both of them are going to the same next state, 
and then thereafter they they are going to have the same thing to do. They are not different in any way. There is no way to distinguish between them. So their propositions are same and their next states are same. Okay. So we merge these two to one state. Okay. Again, these two, after this merging is done, their next state is same. So, again, these two can be merged. And this is the bisimilar equivalent machine. These two machines are bisimulation equivalent, right. And we can show that bisimulation equivalence preserves the truth of all LTL properties, all right. Now, let us look at this thing that instead of keeping this P, 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 Q, if we just keep 1 P and 1 Q like this, then this is this also satisfies P until Q. So, what did we do? We took this whole set of states and this. Okay. Essentially, what are we doing? We are ignoring timing. We are just looking at, we are ignoring the fact that it was in the P state for 4 cycles and then it went to the Q cycle. We just said that okay, it was satisfying Q, P and then it went to Q. If you ignore timing or you can say that okay, it can stay in a state for some time, then these two are equivalent if you ignore timing, right. Now when a, when the state machine is staying in a state where the output does not change like in these 4 states, output P is the same in all those 4 states. Then we say that the machine is stuttering, we say that the machine is stuttering okay. and then we say that these 2 machines, this one and this one, they are stuttering equivalent. Okay. Now, previously when you were studying the, the state minimization algorithms etcetera, essentially we are we were trying to find out bisimilar equivalent states and we are we were trying to merge them, right. That was what the state minimization tries to do. It takes bisimilar states and merges them. That is the classical state minimization algorithm. And stuttering equivalence is something which preserves the truth of CTL formulas without the X operator. Because if you have the X operator, then you can say XXX, you can write that you can write that in this state, okay, XP is true here x p is not true. So, as you as soon as you bring x actually timing enters this scenario because you are talking about next in a fixed quantum of time. So, if you remove the x operator then C T L is preserved by stuttering equivalence. Now, why are we talking about these equivalence relations? Because our goal is to check the property on a minimized or reduced state machine. So now, if you tell me, if, if, if I tell you that I am going to only uh, check properties on the set of output variables, then you can do a bisimulation minimization okay, based on the values of these. Now see, you could not minimize, you, you will not be able to reduce these two into the same state if one of them had uh, say uh, 
a proposition R and the other had a not proposition not R okay. and uh, R was also important in your property, then you would not be able to do this minimization. But if R is something which you do not care about, if R is something on which you, your property does not have, then you actually ignore R. If you just go by when you want to prove P until Q, all you care about is P and Q, right. So, in that case you can ignore R here and get a get this minimization, right. So, given the property that you want to prove, you can choose the set of variables that belong to that property and try to do a by simulation minimization based on that. You can also try to do if you are trying to prove CTL properties without the x operator, you can do try to do a stuttering equivalent reduction, which is going to reduce the number of states even further, right. Now, these are used by the formal tools, but this is not enough. Now, when you use stuttering or by simulation equivalence, it is guaranteed by the definition of these equivalences that the truth of your properties will hold on the will be preserved. So, in other words, if in the abstraction your property is true, then the in your original machine the property is true. If you know if in your abstraction the property is false, then in the original machine also the property is false. This is guaranteed right by, by the definition of this equivalence relation. But even that is not sufficient. So, that is why we go into further abstraction. Abstractions where we will even throw away those variables which may be useful and then try to see how we can prove the property. That brings us to the topic of counter example guided abstraction refinement. So, the in a very high level what we will try to do is we will try to create an approximation of the or an abstraction of the state machine in such a way that if you prove the property on the state machine on the abstraction, then it is guaranteed that the property will hold on the original machine also, right. How? Our abstraction will be done in such a way that every path that was there in the original state machine will also belong to the abstraction. The abstraction will have a superset of the paths that belong to the original machine, right. So, if, if the superset of the path satisfies your property, then the original machine which has a subset of these paths will obviously satisfy the property, okay. So, that is what we guarantee by virtue of the abstraction. However, if you are abstract state machine gives a counter example, then that counter example may not be a true counter example. It because that counter example may not be there in the original uh, machine. So, we have to check whether the counter example is true, is real in the actual machine. If we find that the counter example is real in the actual machine, you say that I have found a bug. But if it is not there in the actual machine, then we need to refine the abstraction. So, that next time when we do the model checking, that counter example is not produced once again, right. So, we will refine the abstraction in such a way that the same fictitious counter example is not produced once again, okay. This is what is meant by counter example guided abstraction refinement. So, you create an abstraction get a counter example, find that it is fictitious and then you do abstraction refinement, okay. And we will use the term cigar as a short form for this because it is C E G A R, okay. So, cigar. Let us get into this now. So, this presentation is based on the work of Ed Clark, Anubhav Gupta, James Kukula and Strickman. Most of these slides are from Anubhav Gupta's presentation uh, in CAV 2002, where he presented this work on cigar. Okay, that is where this is the origin of cigar. 
and then there is has been lot of improvements on that and it is one of the uh, main forces that are used today not only in hardware verification but also in software verification okay it's a very useful technique just to uh, get into the terminology once again given a finite state transition system m having states s inputs i transition relation r and labeling function l and the temporal property p the model checking problem is to check whether m models p right and again we are we have broadly two types of properties i did not explicitly mention this previously if i remember correctly is that we talk about safety properties and liveness properties safety properties are properties which are things which say that you know always something is holding okay so always x is y every send is fo followed immediately by act so these are safety properties and liveness properties are uh, something which must happen in future okay so it's something that you are saying that from some point on always switch on so f g switch on so that means that you have to locate some point after which this is going to happen okay. 99% of the properties that people check actually in hardware are safety properties okay so it, it is if a methodology works on safety properties alone it's it's quite useful in practice so let's see that what is the model checking problem of safety properties we want to find out whether some violation of that property takes place so safety property says that always something is going to hold so you are trying to find out some state where it does not hold right so we start by adding reachable states so we say that we start exploring the state space and when we have actually exhausted the state space then only we can say that the safety property holds right on the other hand if you take an eventual property and then whenever you find a witness for that eventual property you are done right but for a safety property you will have to explore the whole state space because you want to show that it holds everywhere so we add reachable states until we reach a fixed point okay and the problem here is okay so this is how it works start we are progressing uh, like this now we have a fixed point so we have with now the problem here is that there are too many states to handle in practice which is why we want to go for abstraction so this is what we want to do we want to partition the state space into different partitions and in the abstract function each partition will be represented by a state right so this set of states in this partition will be represented by this state this will be this state this will be this this set will be this state right here everything is shown to be equal but it can quite easily be the case that some partition has many states some partition has small number of states okay so partition variables now you can think of this partitioning in another form you can say that okay let me partition the set of variables into those which are visible and those which are invisible now first of all if i say that the invisible variables are like don't cares then first can you see that this is a partition of the state space so if you have three state bits s0 s1 s2 okay then what are the states that you have you have 000 001 okay 010 okay then 011 then 100 uh, 101 and then 110 and 111 these are 
the 8 states right. Now, if you say that this one is a do not care, it is a do not care, then these two states are the same equivalent states because I am dropping the last variable, these two are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same. So, I have partitioned the state machine by saying that these two are visible and this is invisible, clear. Then you can say that let this be my set of states, these four states are my set of states in the abstract state machine. Then we will talk about how to put the transitions into the abstraction. The abstract model consists of V variables and the I variables are made inputs, right. The abstraction function maps each state to its projection over V, okay. Now, the question that arises here is you made S2 as a you made S2 as a do not care variable. Now, we are saying that we are making this S2 as an input, right. We still need S2, why? Because the labels of these states depend on the state as a whole, right. So, what we are saying is that this state machine now becomes something. So, previously what, what was the state machine? It had some combination and logic and it had three state S0, S1, S2, right. The combination and logic was feeding into this. right. Now, what you are doing is you are saying that okay, this is not going to be treated as a state, right. So, what we do is we take this thing out from here, we remove this flop and say that S2 is just an input like my other primary inputs, like my other primary inputs S2 becomes an input, right. This is what we mean by doing this abstraction, right. Now, how is the state machine going to get changed? So, these are going to become the states of the system and the transitions will be added as shown next. So, first step is group concrete states with identical visible part to a single abstract state, okay. So, suppose we make x3, x4 as invisible, then all four of these states is mapping to one state which is 0, 0, right. Now, how do we, so, so here this set of states is becoming this one, this set of states is becoming this one, okay. This is the initial set of states then we have transitions from these. Why do we have this self loop? Because there is a arrow here, right. So, this path for example, remember that the abstraction must preserve all paths of the original state machine, otherwise we will not be able to infer anything at all, right. So, see here again we have the self loop because of these transitions, right. Then we have a transition from here to here, so this transition is there, then we have a transition from here to here, so this transition is there, right. And there is a self loop here which is here, then we have this transition, this. There is no transition from this side to this side, so there is no back transition here. Similarly, this is there, this is there and this is there. Is it clear how we got this transition? Now, take any path in this original state machine and let us see how, whether it belongs to the 
abstract state machine. So, take this path for example, it goes from the initial state, it, it then circles here, okay, maybe twice, then it gets stuck here, it, there is no other place to go, up, go from here, right. So, it goes along in this forever. Is this loop there here in this thing? Yes. So, the corresponding thing is it goes here and then stays here forever, right. The corresponding path is present here also. Take a path like this, it goes here and then here and then get stuck here. That is possible, we go from here, then from here and come back here and then get stuck here, right. Now, interesting thing is that there are some paths in this which is not there in the original state machine. For example, you think of this path. that is not there in the original state machine, but this is going to be shown as a counter example because it reaches the bad states, it reaches the bad states. So, this is going to be thrown up as a counter example and then when you try to go and debug this, you will see that there is actually no path in the original state machine, right. Then we will see that how we want to refine it how we should we refine this abstraction, so that that same counter example does not show up once again. Clear so far? Sir, yes. Okay, so it is very simple. So, you see, you say that these x 3 and x 4, they are not part of the state anymore. Oh, how do you select them? Right. So, what you do is, that initially from your, I will give you a simple example. You start with exactly those set of variables that are necessary for your properties, right. And then what you do is that you say that these are the only variables based on which I will do the abstraction. But th there could be other variables which decide which paths are there or not. So, if you just look at your variables, the, the state bits which determine p, q and r and your properties over p, q and r and if you just do an abstraction based on those variables, you may produce counter examples which are not actually there, right. So, then you go back and start adding more variables into your system. Otherwise, you see things would be so nice, is not it? I mean your property typically has four or five variables, yeah, maybe at most ten variables, not more than that. If you could take a microprocessor and then abstract out the state machine based on only four or five variables, then you would have a state space of 2 to the power 5, right. And if that abstraction worked always, then it would be great. I mean, then we would be always in business, right, and, and no matter the size of the actual processor. But that does not happen unfortunately, because the paths that are actually there in the state machine is not only determined by these variables, but also several other variables and that number of variables is typically quite large, right, which makes things difficult. But at the same time, it is also a very good thing because it, it actually throws out all those things which are not relevant, right. So, you start by, by in a very optimistic way by throwing out a lot of things and then you start you know growing the size of the transition relation by importing some of the variables that you threw away. The in interesting question to answer here is which variables do you bring back, right. Initial set is fine, you just take the property and find out which variables are related to that. But then finding out which are the other variables which should be brought in from the invisible to the visible set is a is a completely non-trivial issue and we are going to see how that happens. In this particular abstraction, all of these are ba bad and we have clubbed them here, right. 
but it is not necessary in in SIGAR that all the bad states have to be clubbed together into one state, it is not necessary. Yes, yes, right, okay. Now, what does this abstraction guarantee? It guarantees this preservation theorem. You know, it is in simple terms, it, it because it says that because your m dash has all the paths that were there in m, right. So, therefore, uh, if m dash models p, then m also models p, right? that is what the, it says, but the converse does not hold necessarily that if m dash does not model p, it does not this thing. So, the counter example may be spurious, right. So, that is why we want to do the uh, abstraction refinement. So, what is a counter example? Each c i is an assignment to v. What is v? The set of visible variables. So, what you get as a counter example is a set of valuations over time of the visible variables, because the model checker can only gets a state machine over the visible variables, right? the invisible variables are just inputs to it. Right? So, it, it gets a assignment of the visible variables. Now, to check whether the counter example is real, we simulate the counter example on the concrete model. Right. Now, again this simulation is non trivial, you have to do a test generation in each cycle to determine the valuations of the other variables. Right. So, anyway, we, but that, that is something which we will not go into, there are good ways of doing that and there is no scalability issues involved in that part right now to test whether the counter example is real on the concrete part. Yes, it does. But then you see you have to make you have to check whether you can actually get those that sequence of inputs. See where is it going to differ? If you look here that we converted S2 into an input. So you said that in one cycle I have S2 as 1, in the next cycle S2 gets 1 again. Now it may so happen that in this actual logic S2 can never be 1 in, in the two successive cycles, right. Now, in that case, the, that input is spurious. Hmm. See, the, the primary inputs, whatever you give can actually happen in practice. The state bits, whatever they are evaluated here is actually going to happen in practice. But the output of the, the input that you give to S2 may be fictitious, may not actually be the uh, out, uh, output that will come from the state machine, right. So, that is what we mean by this. Now, this is the, the steps in checking the counter example. So, we have the initial state, we have the unrolled transition relation okay, and we have the restriction of V to the counter example. Okay. Now, you take these clauses and solve for them. This is something like you know given the values of the variables that the counter example produces, you want to find out the valuation of the remaining variables and see whether you can find any satisfying this thing. So, if you think in terms of BMC, you are unrolling the transition relation, you take the, uh, the counter example trace that is given by your model checker, okay. take that counter example trace. So, that is the that is a valuation of the variables over time that the witness that the counter example has given. Take these two together and see whether that is satisfiable. If it is satisfiable, then in your original state machine you have found a instance of that witness, right. And if it is unsatisfiable, then the counter example is spurious. So, this is the complete abstraction refinement loop. So, we take m p h, the m is the machine, p is the property, okay. 
yeah? h is the abstraction function okay then we abstract this thing use the abstraction function to abstract m to m dash and now we have an abstract state machine m dash and the property p you model check this if it passes you are done right by the preservation theorem otherwise if you fail then check the counter example if the counter example is real then you have a bug if it is spurious then we want to refine the abstraction and then get an abstraction h dash and then go again to get another abstraction m dash dash and check on that so you go around in this loop forever until you can come out of this or this right and there is another exit from this your abstraction becomes so large that you run out of capacity right? it is a very real thing right so you go around this loop so you can come out of this loop either with a pass or with a real bug or you come out of this loop by saying that i have run out of capacity right? now this refinement is a very interesting step so I am going to talk about one refinement uh, method which I find particularly interesting and this is uh, 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 from a paper which appeared in formal methods in CAD in 2002, this is a conference and it was authored by Pankaj Chauhan, Ed Clark, James Kukula, Sapra, Veet and Wang. Um, so the idea is that you simulate the counter example on the concrete model with SAT. Okay. If the instance is unsatisfiable, then analyze the conflict. Okay. Now, that what we want to do is to make visible one of the variables in the clauses that lead to the conflict. Okay. So, you examine the conflict clauses and make one of the variables which participates in that conflict to be visible. Okay. Now, which one? how many is going to be determined by the algorithm itself. So, let us go to this example. So, we have this spurious counter example. Why do we have this counter example? Because we are, ha because we have this from here to here and from here to here. In the actual state machine, from here to here it is there, this is correct. Right. From here to here is also correct. From this to this is also correct. From this to this is not correct. So, you have a transition from this state to this one to this. You also have a transition from this one to this, but this is actually two different sets. So, from here there is no way to go to states on this side and because we could not decide this we thought that there was a path to the bad state. Now what we are going to try to do is to examine this set of states and find out which variable distinguishes between this and these two. Now see if you look at the visible variables, all three of them are have the same value in, in for the visible variables, that is why they are in this partition, right. If we take in all the invisible variables, if we take all the variables, make them visible, then all three of them are different. Now, we do not want to split this into three different partitions, why? Because these two can be in the same one. So, we do not want to bring in all the variables. We just want to bring in exactly that number of variables into the visible set, so that th this set and this set is distinguished. Okay? That is what we want to do. So, in, in the counter example, when we want to trace whether the counter example is real, so we start with this, we find that is there a transition from here to here, 
yes there is then from here to here yes then from here to here no right so we have reached a dead end here so we will call this a dead end state because in the we cannot pro proceed further on the counter example from here if you tried this path then from here can we go to any state on this side no so this will also be a dead end state for this one right now this is the failure state this is the state where we cannot proceed any further the counter example generation stops here it, you cannot uh, find out the corresponding counter example in the machine from here on now here we showed that exactly the next set of states is the dead, is the bad state it could be that you know that there are several intermediate levels after which the bad states are there so it's not necessary that you stop just before the bad state you can stop anywhere because that's where you have reached the dead end so we call this the dead end state now let us see what we do now so dead end and bad states are in the same abstract state what are the dead end states the dead end states are the ones where you cannot proceed any further the bad states are one from which you can reach the bad states okay so this is a bad state because you can reach the refuting states from here okay now the dead end states and bad states are in two different partitions that's what we want currently they are in the same partition so refine the abstraction function the set of dead end and bad states should be separated into different abstract states right so this is what we want to do this state will be a separate state these two will be a separate state right so this is the refinement so is1 and this is the transition relation unrolled from i equal to 0 to f minus 1 okay where f is the state where you stop okay and i equal to 1 to a visible si is equal to ci okay so this is what we have been able to generate so far now this the set of dead end states are defined by this by why because they are the set of visible values okay for which you have been able to unroll this transition relation up to this part and for each of those visible values it matches with ci okay visible si matches with ci what are the ci's the counter example valuation right so this counter example matches with this and they follow the transition relation the actual transition relation to this is this clear that this represents the set of dead end state hmm? this is the represent the set of bad states clear why bad states are they have a transition from sf to sf plus 1 right and visible sf is cf so the values match with the counter example and visible sf plus 1 is equal to cf plus 1 right is that clear no okay see right 
what is the bad state? This one is a bad state, right? So, this should match with the valuations of CI. So, let us say that this is the this is SF, okay. This is the SF. So, the valuation of uh, the variables here in the counter example is called CF, right. So, it is that set of states for which SF should be equal to CF, that is condition number 1. Right? bad states will be the ones which match the valuation of this and the next state should be in, in this one. So, we must have S f plus 1 plus 1 is equal to C f plus 1. and these have to be the next states of these, right. So, we must have R of S f S f plus 1, right. That is all that we require, right. So, R S f S f plus 1, visible S f is equal to C f and visible S f plus 1 is equal to C f plus 1, because S f is actually the whole state. So, out of which the visible part should match with C f, that is why which it is not S f equal to C f, it is visible S f equal to C f, because C f only has a subset of the state bits of S f, right and visible S f plus 1 is C f plus 1, this is the definition of the bad state, right. Okay? and this is the definition of the dead end states, right. Now, what do we want to do? That is because C f plus 1 is the place where the property gets refuted. See, this is the counter example this is the counter example, right. Now, in the counter example, you have C 0, C 1, C 2, these are the valuations of the visible variables on each time step, right. And in the f th time step, in the f plus 1 th time step, the property has failed. In the counter example trace, remember that the counter example trace has only the visible variable, right. So, now, what are we trying to find out? We are trying to find out in the original state machine where S is the set of variables, we are trying to find out whether there is a corresponding path in that, right. Now, when we talk about bad states, it is the bad states in the original state machine, right. So, in the original state machine, which are those the bad states? It is those states which match with this f the counter the f h state of the counter example in terms of the visible variables right. So, visible s f is c f and it matches the next one also. So, visible s f plus 1 is c f plus 1 and in the original state machine we have a transition from s f to s f plus 1. So, you see that is exactly this set of states this state. See, it has a transition in the original state machine from here to here, right. Now, this is not going to be in your bad state, why? Because there is, because there is, see, this matches with, uh, visible of this matches with C f, visible of this matches with C f plus 1 but there is no transition R S f to S f plus 1 is not there, there is no such transition. So, that is why this is not going to go into the bad set state, bad uh, set of states, right. This one is going to go in, 
Now, is it clear why that is going to go in? No, no, no. See, I, I think we are getting confused. We are trying to find out a valuation of SF here and SF plus 1 here such that R SF SF plus 1 is there. So, we are trying to find out a set of adjacent states in the original state machine okay, such that visible of F SF is the visible of this abstract state and visible of SF plus 1 is this visible is this abstract state, right. That match should be there and there has to be a transition from SF to SF plus 1. Now, there is only one transition here, right. So, therefore, only this one qualifies to be a bad state, okay. Similarly, look at the dead end states. What is the dead end states? See, initial of S1 because it has to be a dead end states will be have to be reachable from the beginning, right. Those states which are not reachable, we do not care about, it is only the reachable states that we care about. So, a dead end state has to be reachable from the beginning, okay. And for all i equal to 1 to f, f is this this world, visible si should be equal to ci. Okay. So, what am I trying to do? I am trying to find out a valuation of S0, S0 rather S1, S2 through SF. I am trying to find out a valuation of these such that there is a transition from each to the next which is given by this, right. And they all match with the respective values here, right, and I S 1 is the initial state. So, what does this give us? This gives us the set of states which are reachable from the start state, right, okay. And if the counter example is not real, then this set of states will be dead end states. is not it? Because if it is was not a dead end state, then you would be able to move from here to the next one. But then the counter example would have been real. If the counter example is not real, then this is what gives you the set of dead end states. Is it clear? And this is the set of bad states, right. We have run out of time. So, in the next lecture, I will tell you that given the set of dead end states and the bad states, how do we actually compute the refinement? Okay.